previously on Free Return Trajectory. Prolonged exposure to many dust devils, especially ones that are 500 meters or more in diameter, can be dangerous, but just after two days of being in the storm, perseverance was lost. It was unclear what went wrong. Five days after the dust devil storm started, Insight stopped sending data to Earth. By now, the countless dust devils have grown and merged to what was starting to look like a global dust storm. Scientists within these agencies were starting to think that they might be witnessing a planet-changing event. This means that something on Mars caused that boulder to be blasted into the air, and then it simply fell back down to Mars. And with that, Curiosity began its 12-month journey. In our two and a half years of investigating the ocean of Enceladus, we've come across many interesting structures, from complex molecules to deep crevasses at the bottom of gigantic ice sheets. All of the structures have similar analogs to structures on Earth. Even as we went down deeper into the ocean in search of more complex molecules, things were more or less familiar. When we sent out a probe, it usually stays within two kilometers of Carl. That's the furthest distance at which we can safely control it. An incident happened where we lost communication with probe two. Probe three was sent out to the location of the incident, but nothing out of the ordinary was detected. Probe two appeared to have just vanished. This is the first time we've lost a probe and now we have to go through the lengthy task of filling out an incident report instead of doing actual science. These filings can take weeks to complete. But then, after about an hour, Probe 2 returned to Carl with his communication still not functioning. The probes are designed to return home when communication is lost for a certain amount of time. Upon viewing the video recorded in conjunction with preliminary data from the physical material collected by the probe, it appeared that probe 2 temporarily lost power and fell to a depth of 23 kilometers, which is outside of our communication range. At that time, power still was not restored. What stopped the probe from falling deeper into the ocean is what our team is excited about. All we know for now is that the surface is flexible and almost strong enough to support the weight of the probe. We also know that the surface is in part composed of lipids. Probe 2 is being dismantled in the probe prep room for a full search and study of materials that may have come from the unknown surface. This could be a major discovery in our research of the ocean of Enceladus. It will take some time to dismantle the probe. And since we cannot start the investigation of the probe until that's completed, I'll take this time to send us back to 2023, where we then made an equally major discovery that ultimately led us to quickly colonize the solar system. Total silence. That's how the atmosphere at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, or JPL, was described in the minutes leading to Mars coming out of the solar conjunction. Normally, this is not an eventful period, because these Mars conjunctions happen every two years, and NASA had probes on Mars beginning in 1976 with Viking 1. But, this time, things were different. Rosetta's hammer. That's the nickname given to the boulder that fell from the sky. What made this boulder mysterious was not its composition. We don't know its composition yet. What made it mysterious was its impact speed, way below supersonic, the expected speeds of things coming from space. This implied that the boulder was launched into the air from Mars, and that's why it was deemed mysterious. Sticking to the protocol set for Curiosity on its way to Aeolus Mon, 
an anomaly along the way needs to be investigated. Although the site of Rosetta's hammer was only 200 meters away, it would take curiosity about seven souls to get there. Why? The main reason was wheel slippage. After Soul 3 of heading towards Rosetta's hammer, Curiosity's wheels started slipping. This is an indication of soft ground, and soft ground poses a risk of Curiosity getting stuck. The rover team at JPL, for that reason, limited the programmed distance that Curiosity was allowed to travel autonomously. This gave them time to assess the environment in smaller steps. Normally, this would be handled by the rover's fault protection, autonomous navigation, and visual odometer software. Up until this point, about 16% of the motion commands sent to Curiosity were terminated prematurely because continuing would put the rover in danger. The rover team would then assess the situation and send new commands or continue the old ones if things looked safe. However, because of the uncertainty of the condition of the soil surrounding the site of Rosetta's hammer, mobility errors were being triggered a lot more often, at a rate of 60%. The traction of the ground for a given area would change over time for reasons unknown. NASA debated on stopping and analyzing the soil or continuing directly to the impact site. They decided that the latter was a better choice because they could analyze the boulder and soil at that destination. After reaching the boulder, Curiosity drilled a small hole in it then placed the sample into the Sample Analysis at Mars Instrument, or SAM for short. SAM is a suite of instruments that detect the chemical composition of soil placed inside it. SAM includes a gas chromatograph and a mass spectrometer. This is similar to the GCMS instrument used on the Huygens Atmospheric Probe that was released into Titan's atmosphere on 14 January 2005. SAM takes about four to six hours to complete its analysis. During that time, a picture from the front nav cam captured an image of something that was never observed on Mars. Because this region is below the flight path of the comet P2019 LD2 that mysteriously lost mass in 2019, there was speculation from French astronomers that there might be a connection between the lost mass and this boulder. The image showed a liquid substance pouring out of the boulder, and given its height above the ground, it appeared to be a viscous liquid. A viscous liquid at such a low temperature and pressure is something that has never been observed on Mars. What is this liquid, and what's inside the boulder? It was revealed over the next few souls that the boulder, in fact, had the same composition as the majority of rocks on Mars, basalt. But what was unclear was the composition of the viscous liquid. Curiosity had to find a way to look inside the rock. Because of the viscosity of the liquid, it couldn't be poured into the sample collection port for analysis like a rock or soil sample would be. But thankfully, Curiosity has attached to its arm an instrument called Alpha Particle X-ray Spectrometer, or APEX for short. This instrument shoots alpha particles generated by a radioactive source into the sample. The elements within the sample scatters the alpha particles and some of these are detected. Some elements also emit X-rays when hit by alpha particles. These X-rays are also detected by Apex. Each chemical element has a unique signature when it comes to how much X-ray is generated and how much alpha particles are scattered. The limited detection distance of the apex required it to be placed directly on the sample. This is normally not a problem when sampling rocks or soil because they're solid. With a liquid and a viscous one at that, there's a good chance that it could get stuck on the apex after sampling is completed. After debating these issues and further analysis of the images taken of the liquid, it isn't particularly sticky. And that's surprising. 
This came from the fact that there was hardly any dust on the liquid, despite it being in proximity where a hole was drilled in the rock, a process that generates dust. The apex analysis takes two to three hours, but with the slow bandwidth and limited time that Mars is pointing towards Earth, NASA got the data back 18 hours later. The composition of the liquid and its potential implication surprised engineers across the globe. Here was something that had the potential to make every electrical device generate less heat. This could have many practical applications both in the civilian and military sector. But like many scientists, practical application wasn't the thing on their mind. But instead, how does it work? Where did it come from? That's what the scientists were thinking about. From the apex analysis of the liquid, it contained copper, oxygen, strontium, and calcium. But what got some scientists excited was the ratio in which these elements were occurring. They closely matched that of a certain group of high temperature superconductors. That's not to say that the liquid exhibits superconducting properties, but it might have such properties given its composition and the ambient temperature on Mars at Gill Crater of negative 80 degrees Celsius. While NASA was preparing for Curiosity to move out of the Rosetta Hammers area, they detected three distinct increases in temperature on the sensors of REMS. REMS measures air temperature and wind speed on its two booms located on the left and right side of the mast. This increase in temperature was rapid, indicating that the source of the heat was most likely local. REMS detected a temperature increase of 40 degrees Celsius in two seconds. Each time, the air temperature was raised from minus 80 to minus 40 degrees Celsius. But then, another boulder was captured by the nav cam falling nearby. This was followed by seven more within the hour. They all landed about 400 meters away from Curiosity in what looked like a cluster. Scientists around the world were now starting to think that they were dealing with an unknown phenomenon never detected on any celestial body before. This was partly due to the fact that the eight boulders landed within about a meter of each other without colliding or hitting Curiosity. Some scientists even suggested that considering these boulders are around 3 meters in diameter and fell from an altitude of at least 100 meters, their final resting position suggests that they may have been guided by more than just gravity or aerodynamics. With that single suggestion made, all the ancient alien theorists came out in full force. The whole idea about aliens on Mars was resurrected once again. The History Channel started broadcasting reruns of the television series Ancient Aliens. People started looking for a connection between Gale Crater and the so-called face on Mars located in the Cydonia region. But scientists at NASA were focused on hard facts, tested theories, and the cluster of eight boulders. They then decided to observe them for about a month from a closer distance of 150 meters. And then, in a span of just 30 minutes, Four of the boulders disappeared, while the remaining four appeared to be partially buried into the ground. Thirty minutes later, those partially buried four also disappeared. The entire cluster was gone in just an hour. Since these are static images, it's hard to say what took place between each image. But considering some of the boulders looked partially buried before disappearing altogether, scientists figured that the most plausible explanation is that the boulders fell into an opening in the ground, something like a cavern or lava tube. The question on the minds of the engineers at NASA was, is it safe for Curiosity to drive to the edge of the opening and look down? Scientists thought it was worth it. After a week of additional analysis and no additional boulders falling from the sky or vibration detected using the front and rear Hascam, NASA decided that it was safe for Curiosity to proceed to the rim of the suspected opening. As Curiosity approached the opening, it became clear that it looked like a tube, not a cavern. Perhaps a lava tube. Curiosity went as close as safety would allow and extended its arm over the tube. Using a camera attached to the end of its robotic arm called Mars Hand Lens Imager, or MOLLE for short, Curiosity was able to peer down the tube. The tube appeared to be 3 meters wide and ran about 2 meters deep before running into what looked like a bigger tube that runs horizontally. 
As Curiosity prepared to drill on the walls of the suspected lava tube, it activated SAM. SAM is the primary way that Curiosity analyzes Martian soil, but it can also be used to analyze the air surrounding the drill that collects the sample for SAM. So when it was turned on and the air was analyzed, scientists were surprised to find that the air was 10% oxygen. In addition, REMS measured an increase in temperature around the rover. Instead of the normal minus 60 degrees Celsius, the temperature was now minus 30 degrees Celsius. At this point, scientists were speculating that whatever was generating the heat was also producing the oxygen. Considering that this lava tube is only two meters below the surface and no volcanic activities have ever been detected on Mars, the source of the heat is not likely to come from the interior of the planet. Maybe the heat is from an exothermic reaction caused by CO2 being introduced into the lava tube from the surface. NASA and the scientific community would spend the next month debating whether or not to continue to Aeolus Mons or spend the next four months doing a detailed analysis of the entrance to this lava tube. At this point, a handful of scientists were quietly developing a hypothesis that would link the newly collected atmospheric data of the lava tube to the atmospheric data of known exoplanets. Thank you.